welcome now i'm going to try to make this fast because i have to use the bathroom and i need to get my workout on but this is a thought that i have been um thinking about the past couple of days and i know that it came up in my thoughts a while ago you know where it says where jesus said that you cannot love god in money and i always saw it from the from the only from the perspective of you can't love money and god because as a believer you'll trust in your ability to care for yourself opposing to trust in the the, the ability of god to care for you so you can't love self provision and 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 self sustaining ideas that that are held in the world and still love god at the same time because when god wants you to trust in him and, and rest in faith you're like I could do that. I do believe, I, I believe you, but <laughs> I could pay this. I got it. I got it. But then I saw something different. It's like for the love of money, you will push God out of a situation. You can't love God and love money because if you love money where you should speak the truth, you won't because you'd rather take the bag. And you see that throughout scripture, the fortune teller that Paul dealt with. She was following them around. And then Paul casts out the, the, the demon that was in this woman. And when it got back to her owner, that he couldn't make no money off of her no more. Oh, no, no, no. Paul got to go. They got to go. I don't know who these guys are, but they didn't mess with my money. They have to go. <laughs> Same thing is true in the life of the believer. It's instead of saying what is true. And, and, and before I jump ahead, I do want to say that Paul was obviously preaching the gospel because he was there for days because the word of God says that this young lady was following him for days. And it just got to a point where he was just totally annoyed. So you can preach the gospel just as long as you don't touch none of their money. Don't touch none of their money. They're fine with it. You know, but the moment that you begin to, to, to impact the lives of the people and you bring liberty and freedom and the mind of the culture begins to shift into truth. And then it begins to, to affect the wallets of those that are in power. Oh, trust me, there's going to be an issue. <laughs> but as long as you're preaching and you ain't, you ain't touching our money, we don't care. We do not care. So that was the two ways that I saw how you cannot love God in money. But I found it interesting because we are to walk in wisdom. We should have so much wisdom that we use the wisdom of Christ to our benefit. And you see that again in scripture. Uh, I'm going to give you um, the incidents with Paul two times. Hilarious. And they're like back to back. If you read Acts, I think it's chapter 22 into 23. First, it goes with them trying to give Paul a beating. Like the first time he took it, but the second time he was like, time out. Wait a minute, dog. <laughs> wait a minute. Is it okay for y'all to just be like beating on a Roman citizen? And he was like, wait a minute, time out. He's a Roman citizen. But then when he goes before the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he's using his wisdom and he's reading the room. You don't believe in the resurrection, but you do. Um, brothers, brothers. The reason why I'm here is because I'm preaching of Jesus Christ who died and rose from the dead and fight. It became such an issue between them two that he was like totally out of the picture. They had to rip Paul out of there because <laughs> they thought they was going to hurt him. It was a total mess. Why? Because he read the room and he played chess. We have to be able to use the same wisdom. It's the same wisdom of God that is in us. And so when I look at the world around us, it makes me laugh because the whole time we really do have the power. They tell us things. And they have us believe things that aren't true. If your vote really didn't matter, then why do they fight so hard for it? Why do they fight so hard to manipulate you in lies to believe certain things so that you'll just throw it away like it don't mean nothing? If it really doesn't mean anything. The truth of the matter is, is that we really do hold the power. And this is why boycotting was so huge back then. You don't really see a lot of it now, at least not from conservatives. You see a lot of it. They call it protesting of, of what the left does, but it was effective and it still is effective today. I remember when President Trump used the wallet and I remember all of media 
mocking him. Like, this isn't how things are done. You talked about uh, bark and bite. Uh, some critics of the president's uh, latest uh, uh, sanctions uh, aimed at the very highest level, uh, uh, the Ayatollah Khamenei, as well as uh, 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 folks in charge of uh, the IRGC, etc., they're wondering just how effective uh, they can be in the sense that, I mean, look, even if they do have teeth, it's a question of maybe there isn't much to bite. Right. The criticism is correct. Um, the Ayatollah and most of the people closest to him don't really have um, bank accounts in their names uh, associated with banks in Europe or outside of, of Iran that would be able to sanction. So this is really uh, more of a symbolic act. But I think it, it underpins the, the bigger concern that the United States really put itself in. And that is, they've put very tough sanctions on the oil industry, on other industries, on the financial industry. You know, I'm no expert, but I assume that they are going to uh, make it even more difficult for people in Iran to do business. The question really, though, is strategy and will it work? Because as was pointed out, they came, the two secretaries briefed in that same room last September and said at that time that the sanctions were the strongest that they had ever imposed on any country. And we've seen all of the activity by Iran since then. So I guess the question becomes, do we really think that this is the step? These are the sanctions that break Iran's will or will it continue? But it worked. <laughs> Y'all want to act stupid? Cut their money. Cut it. Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. They throw a little temper tantrum. Oh, you want to play more games? Cut it. Cut it all the way. Cut it even more if we have to. Uh, as previously announced by the president, we are announcing additional sanctions against the Iranian regime as a result of the attack on U.S. and allied troops. First, the president is issuing an executive order authorizing the imposition of additional sanctions against any individual owning, operating, trading with, or assisting sectors of the Iranian economy, including construction, manufacturing, textiles, and mining. And let me be clear, these will be both primary and secondary sanctions. Second, we are announcing 17 specific sanctions against Iran's largest steel and iron manufacturers, set three Seychelles-based entities, and a vessel involved in the transfer of products. As a result of these actions, we will cut off billions of dollars of support to the Iranian regime, and we will continue our enforcement of other entities. The reintroduction of U.S. sanctions has had a crippling effect on the economy. The value of the rial has plummeted, pushing inflation to over 30 percent. And U.S. President Donald Trump's attempt to destroy the country's oil industry is having an effect, too. The lifting of sanctions in 2016 spurred rapid growth of more than 12 percent. But their reimposition last year dealt a massive blow. The International Monetary Fund is forecasting the Iranian economy to shrink by 6 percent this year. And they pulled it in. The same thing is true, even with the wokeness. For us to believe that we have no say in what gets pushed out is a lie. A lot of these companies that are saying, oh, we're for this and we'll, we'll come out and we'll support this, snatch that money away and let's see what they really stand for. Do you really support this? It's kind of funny because um, when Disney decided to throw their hat into the ring with DeSantis because they, they decided to label it the don't say gay bill, no such thing. The only thing that DeSantis was pushing was saying, listen, this woke ideology Leave the kids alone. Let the kids be kids. I don't want none of this gender nonsense coming into the classrooms from from kindergarten to third grade. You're not allowed to talk about it. You can just educate them on reading, math, social stuff. Give them the basics, but stay away from anything dealing with gender and sex and all of that stuff. Leave the wokeness out of the classroom. And Disney was like, oh, no, we don't like this. So we got something to say about that. And DeSantis was like, you want to throw your hat here? OK, fine. Strip their privileges. Disney lost their privileges. Yeah. And it's amazing that as soon as the pocketbook was touched, that Netflix was like, listen, <laughs> this wokeness, y'all got an issue with what we're doing. And, and the beautiful thing, not to jump ahead, the beautiful thing is that we're going to need people that it, you don't have to be a believer. I pray that you receive Christ, you know, that you would come into the, the regenerating, the rebirth. I want you to know him and really enter into the freedom of God. Yes. But even for Dave Chappelle to have the courage to stand up to say, I said what I said and that's it. 
I'm not apologizing for nothing. But because he did that and all of you know the people that work at Netflix were outraged, we're gonna walk out, we're gonna do, we're gonna, listen, Disney done lost their, their privileges. We not about to lose no money here. Y'all got a problem with it, you can leave. So now, now y'all got cojones. Now, if you have a problem with it, you can, you can leave. It has always been that way. So when they decide to stand up and say, this is what we're going to do to combat the argument of truth and righteousness and sanity at this point, then I think the response from the American people is going to be, y'all want to play stupid games? You can win them stupid prizes because <laughs> we not handing you no money. And I think that as soon as they get the memo, it's going to be like, okay, listen, as much as we want to back this and we want to back this because, you know, we want the money, but the money's not here. It's just not here. So uh, I'm not losing a billion dollars for this nonsense, but you're going to have to skip on this one. We'll leave that to them. You know, we, we, we stand in solidarity with you, but we're not, we not going to throw our hat in this ring. We're not doing that. <laughs> we are not doing that. So it, it's really going to take the people to wake up and understand that we really are the ones that have the right and the say in what happens but also it's it's really going to take discipline because for a lot of us even though we know that something is not right but because of our comfort we don't want to let go of it like i enjoy being able to watch all my tv shows and have packages delivered to me in less than 24 hours like all of these things are great and i would hate to have to give that up but i guarantee if if one of these people these wealthy people that run these corporations really got hit by the people standing together, it would totally change their tune. Absolutely. But I'm going to leave it there. Um, just think about it on, on your own time. Just just the way all of these things work and, and understanding that being spiritual doesn't mean that you don't know how to operate or give answers to people and things in the natural this whole idea that you are so heavenly minded that you are no earthly good is, is, is a lie. When you are heavenly minded, you become an earthly good. Because the wisdom of God is so needed in this time. Direction and understanding to be able to move forward and be productive is so necessary in this time. So people of God who carry the spirit of God, the very wisdom of God within them, you are the salt of the earth, the light of the earth and you are absolutely earthly good so i'm gonna leave it at that i know that you have been blessed in your hearing remember family today is the day of salvation the year of the lord's favor bride of christ arise